in this video on Microsoft Word word processors, we're going to be looking at tables and how we can use them in our Word documents. So let's get into tables. So let's start off with a basic example where we don't actually have a table to work with. So let's let's use this for example. We've got a nice little example here where they want us to create a four by six table. In other words, four columns and six rows. So this is inserting a table. So I'm just going to come here to insert. And you can see straight away here is the table. So you can insert a table this way where you can specify the number of columns and the number of rows. So you can specify the details. That's one method. Or you can simply just go, okay, there we want six, uh, four columns and six rows. You could do something along those lines. So there we go. That's a four by six table. And there we go. So there's our table. And then there are a couple of things that you can do. Once you've clicked on a table, you'll notice there are two things that are added to the ribbon. There's the table design where you can actually format what that table looks like. There are lots of pre-designed table styles you can use. You can use shading to shade in the color of the table. Now if you select a particular row and shade it in, it'll only do that particular row. If you do the whole table and you can do that by clicking on that little block there, then you can shade the entire table. But you can play around with that. You've got your border styles and so on. And then you've got your layout. These are probably the tools you use the most often where you can edit things. You can insert and delete. You can merge cells and stuff like that. So the first thing they ask us is to merge the last row into one cell. So a cell is like one block. So let's select all of these blocks at the bottom. Do you see there are four of them? We want those cells to become one. We want to merge them. And there is the merge option. You can also right click and there's a merge option over there as well. So either one will work. And now you can see that it's one block. Now they want me to split it into two cells. So you can do that by selecting that block and you can split the cells. If you split the table, it'll separate this from the other table. So it'll make two tables, but we want to split the cells and I want to split them into two columns in one row. You could do multiple other options. You can do that if you want, but we want to do that. And it will try to find the line that's closest to there. If you select this line, you'll see how the cursor changes. Now if I select that line, you see the entire line moves. But if I select this block and then I select that particular line, then it only moves that particular line. So those are little features that you can be aware of that you need to be cognitive of. And so there we go. And you can play around. We can play around with the height, for example. We can select this particular row. You can type in text like name and surname and things like that. You can type in whatever you want in your table. And when you select a particular row, you can change the height. I want to change the height of that row. I want to make it a bit bigger. So do you see how I've made that quite big? Now the alignment is always by default. It's in the top left hand corner and you have both the horizontal alignment, which is from left to right and the vertical alignment, which is up and down. So most of the time you can specify where you want it over here. I like it center center. So that's middle center. So there we go. That's normally a nice option. And if you select the entire table, that's normally a better way if you select every cell and if you want them all to be the same layout and you can do that as well. You can also specify the text direction in which direction you want the text to go and so on. So you can play around with these options and then do you see how it just made it a bit bigger now. So now we can auto fit the table. We can auto fit it to the contents or to the window or to the fixed width. So if I do that, it will obviously minimize everything to whatever the size is of the contents. But there's not much contents in besides those two. So I'm going to undo that because I want to get it back to its original state. So you can play around with all these tools like distributing the rows evenly or the columns evenly. And if you go to the last block, if I click on a block and I press tab, it'll make me move from one cell to the next in from left to right up and down. But if I go to the very last one, and I press tab at the last block, it'll create a new row for you. If you want to create a new row in the middle somewhere, maybe over there, you can either click on that little plus sign, that'll add a new one, or you can write, you can select that area, you can use this option of here where you can insert a row below or above. Now we want to insert a new column at the end of the table, so I want to select this whole column here. You can select a column as well. If you move your mouse to the top, you see how it goes to that black arrow. That's how you can select a whole column. It's the same with the row. If I go to the row, you can select the whole row by selecting the arrow like that. And we're going to insert to the right. So there we go. So now we've got a new column on the right hand side. So that's the gist of our 
tables. That's how we create tables and we can edit them and so on. And you can even draw, if we come here to the, the table design, if you want the borders to be a particular size, you can even draw a table. In other words, you get like a little pen and you can actually say, I want to extend this line further down. So you can actually just continue drawing that line down. And there we go. And you've drawn, you've split those cells for you. You can do the same over here. You can do those type of things. Or you can just draw like a new row, I think, at the bottom if you just draw it like that. So there we go. It adds a new row at the bottom. So you can use this little drawing tool under table design. You can change the pen color if you want and so on. So you can change the borders. You can say no borders. Some people use, for example, tables to lay out the document the way they want. And then they hide the borders so that you can't see that they've used border or tables to do it so you could do that for example if you want or you can say them all back or you can specify the borders by borders and shading just remember when you do borders and shading let's go and try that out quickly so we're doing the borders and shading if you want to change the color of the borders if i change them to green do you notice it changes all of them to green if i just make them a bit thick you can see they're all green but if i want the inner ones to be yellow then you first deselect them then change the color and then you add them in the middle again so there we go you can even change their width so that you make them a particular width if you want to do that so the outer borders are all green and the inner borders are all yellow so that's what our table will look like other options if you come here to layout you can also see there is a properties option or you can right click on a table and go to the table properties and there you can see the properties for the table where its alignment is on the page if there's text wrapping around that table that you want you can specify that there and then you can specify individual details for the row or the column or a particular cell. Maybe if you want alternative text to be visible as well. So you've got all these options over here. You can also come here, for example, if I come to the cell, the options for the padding, for example, the margins inside that particular cell. So the key thing with this to remember is that if I've got one row selected and I go to the properties, if I specify the row height, you can specify it to be at least or exactly a particular value. It will only apply that to your selected row. But if I select multiple rows and change their height, specify the height and I want them to be a particular height, then that will change all of them if you want. So remember that. So if you want to select multiple, multiple columns, for example, you must select all of the columns, go to the properties, and then you can specify the details of that column of how wide it must be and so on. If you wanted to apply to the entire table then or details about the entire table, then you can select these ones as well. So there we go. there's some more options over there about the margins, the, the cell margins and so on. So you can play around with that as well. So those are the basic formatting options available to you when it comes to your tables. Now, I've got a table that I've populated with a lot of details over here. You can see there's a whole bunch of details here. So what I want to focus on with this part of the video is I want to look at the sorting option under layout and the formulas. So when I'm sorting, if you've got a nice little header in the top row, that makes the life a lot easier. So for example, if I want to sort by the class, I can select the class and I can come here to sort. And it will say, do you want to sort by class? It's, what type of data is it? Is it text or number? It's text. And you can say ascending or descending. And if I do that, if I click OK, if your header, if your header row has text, that makes your life a lot easier because then it'll refer to whatever is in the header row there. If it doesn't, then you say no header row and you refer column five or whatever. But we do have a header row and I can click OK. And but you see just the class is selected and John Smith is at the top and then Jane Doe. But then if I click OK, do you see how the date, other data all changed as well? All of it was sorted according to the class so it, it sorted everything it made sure that when it moved something down it moved the entire row down and if it moved something up it moved the entire row up so just be aware of that when you do that sort another thing when you do when you do a sort you can you can write we can go to the sort option you can sort on multiple options up to three so you can sort by class then you can sort by something else if you want what that means is if the classes are the same, it will then move to the next category. Okay. So for example, if I sort by, let's try another option. We've selected class, but if I select the entire table and then sort it, I can say sort by surname and then by grade. What that will mean is 
it would sort by surname first and if any person has the same surname it would then move to the next criteria and sort it just those same surnames by the grade for example now i'm going to come here to the final row over here and we are going to total all these values over here we're going to total all of them so there we go so you see all these numbers over here under owen i want to total all of them so i'm going to over here want to total all of them I wonder how much is the total amount that he's owing. So we could do this in a spreadsheet, but because we've got it in a table in Word, we can actually just come here to formula. If I click on formula, now there are no cells to reference, but it can do equal sum of above. Or you could do the sum of the left, and it would sum everything of the top or every one thing to the side. Sum of the bottom or sum of the, the right. You see, you could use those as your range. It's very similar to Excel. And then you can specify the format if you want it, to, like in decimal places or percentage, you can specify that. And then there are other functions available to you. You can see there's ABS, which is makes a, po a negative number positive. And if you want if statements, you can do that. There's a whole lot of options. But most of the time, you'll probably use sum maybe you want to use min or max maybe you want to use an average function or count you can use those so if we want to find for example the sum of the above so i can click okay and there we go so there's the sum and if i click on it you'll notice how it is grayed which means if i change this data that's the beauty of it if i change the data it doesn't change there but if i right click on that that formula and i update the field you'll see it's updated to the new value so you can do things like that. And if you want to go edit that field, you just click on the formula and we go, hey, I actually want it to be the average now, please. I want the average of the above. So let's take away some, the average of the above. So the average amount owing is, it's a syntax error. What's the syntax error, Mr. Law? Uh, I think I, put, I missed some brackets there. So there we go. Average, open bracket above. There we go. That seems a bit better. There we go, 73 Rand is the average amount that every person owes, that's on average. So that's how you can use your formulas. And the last little bit on tables is how do we take data that looks like this? Maybe I've got data, it looks like a table, it's got commas and separated by commas. It looks like it could be a table, but it's not. It's unfortunately not exactly, but you, if, it, if it's consistently laid out, so it's always names and then commas and surnames and then dates, then grades, then classes. If it's consistently formatted, then it's quite easy. Then I can come here to my options over here. So I'm going to click on this option. I'm going to come here to insert and instead of inserting a table, I'm going to convert the text to a table. And then this will pop up. It'll ask me how many columns and rows do I want? Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces of data. So therefore it will be five columns. I think there are 10 lines of data. So the 10 rows make sense. And you can specify what is separating each individual column. In this case, it's a comma. So it's already picked up that it's a comma, but you could specify maybe you've got something that's separated by tabs, or you can specify what the delimiter is. That's what it's called, what each thing is separated by. And you can auto fit all these things. So you can set those properties, go OK, and boom, there we go. Everything's in a nice little table for us. That's great. So there we go. So that's nice and easy, very quick to then go and do your editing t tools here with your table design in your lot. But what happens if I wanted to go back, if I've got a table and I want it to be back into text, well, if I come here to loud, you'll see there's a convert to text option. Let's take this, for example, and we want to convert it to text. And then you can specify what each one is separated by. Maybe I don't want to go back to commas. Maybe I want everything separated by tabs. If I click on that, you can see there we go. Everything separated by a tab. If I come here to the show hide, you can see all those tabs over there. So everything's tab, name, tab, surname, tab, date, and so on. So there we go. So those are your other tools when it comes to converting to text or from table to text or text to table. I hope you have absorbed all that information about tables. If you want more videos, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, check out our playlist and our videos tab. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.